We are about to step into our next segment, and that is the headlines across the Africa segment. Stay with us, don't go anywhere. Headlines across Africa. Headlines across Africa. Headlines across Africa. Headlines across Africa. Well, today we're going to Cote d'Ivoire, we're going to Madagascar, and then we're going to Mali. Okay. Where are we starting with? Let's start with Mali. All right. What's so happening? we're reading from the Abamako newspaper. And the headline simply says that UNTM government policy pending future rounds of negotiations. Mm. Okay. The National Union of Workers of Mali, UNTM, sent a four-day strike notice to the Ministry of Labor and the Public Service last Monday, which was 17th uh, to Friday. Okay. Now, the decision was made last Friday during a special session held at a labor exchange. In this strike notice, Mali's largest workers' union calls for the immediate implementation of agreements whose deadlines are due or exceeded in relation to the deadlines for the conciliation minutes that was signed on 5th February 2021. Now, the diligence processing of agreements whose deadlines have not been expired, and they're looking at it with a view to the termination of the verbal conciliation trial that was signed on 5th February 2021, and the transition government taking over the wages of Comatex workers an immediate restart of production. Now, UNTM also requires the extension of the judiciature bonus to clerks and secretaries of the registrars and prosecutors in accordance with the harmonization of item 1.1 of the conciliation minutes of 5th February. The return to their respective post of the 22 workers of the Ministry of Territorial Administration identified following the strike from 9th November to 22nd December 2020 and the immediate application of the point of agreement on the payment of salaries and ancillary salaries of civil servants of the local authorities. Everybody wants money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very. Who doesn't want money in this world? Just drop your hand already. Who doesn't want money in this world? Forget you. It. Forget it. Anyway, let's go on to the next one. Yeah. yeah. That would help us. Mm. Well, moving on. <laughs> so, well, basically, they're, they're serving a strike notice, and it's because I mean, some of them want an increase in their raise and okay. stuff. So, I think, the, <laughs> is this a time to be asking for money, Seth? <laughs> COVID 19. Well, yes. Yes, because this is a time a lot of people are losing their jobs. Like yeah. getting cut in terms of salary, what they take home, and all of that. So, yes, this is the time we need money the most. Okay. Mm-hmm. What? Do you have something else to say? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking of the objection? government. So. Mm, right. Okay. We're going to Madagascar. We're reading from the Le Express Day Madagascar newspaper. And the headline says, Football, FMF disagreement over the fate of Dupuy. Mm. The members of the Federation's Executive Committee ultimately failed to reach a joint decision on the retention or suspension of Nicolas Dupois. Split in two, for several months now, the Executive Committee of the Malagasy Football Federation has not spoken with a common voice. It's a dirty secret. The balance of power highlights three members on one side and seven on the other. At the last meeting on Monday night, the rift again led to yet another disagreement. The apple of discord is Nicolas Dupoy this time. Now, the three want to dismiss the Baria coach due to poor can playoff results and violations of several terms of his contract. For their part, the seven wish to keep him in his post. Their position ignores the damning reports provided by the National Technical Directorate. Hmm... <laughs> yeah, a whole lot going in there. Yeah, football is not being, I mean, with coaches being moved and sacked and replaced left, right, center. But that's not, that's not news I know. in football fraternity, I know. is it? Yeah. It's just, lately, you just have it coming back to back to back. Yeah. Anyway. What was the latest one before this one? Mourinho? Yeah, yeah Mar- Mourinho was <laughs> the latest. So I think there was another one too in South, was South Africa or one of, one of these African countries right. also. Mm. Yeah. Well, if things are not working well, you definitely need a, a new hands on deck, you know. Okay. Well, finally, we're going to Côte d'Ivoire. And in Côte d'Ivoire, we're reading from the Fratmat News Pay. 
newspaper. Right. What is it saying? Fratmat Info, actually. Not okay. Fratmat Newspaper. Okay. So it has to do with transportation and Qatar. Okay. Yes, yeah, so they have announced an agreement with Cote d'Ivoire. Right. And it's actually to begin on 16th of June. Mm. Okay. Transportation. Yes. And what is that going to do? Because 2022, there will be the hosting of the World Cup there. Qatar. Yeah. They're it's working. Uh, you know, they're, they're actually working. And I think, wait, could that be the reason why they're actually signing and partnering with a lot of African countries lately? Uh, well, they're uh, signing different deal agreements with different African countries. It depends. It depends. It depends. It may be, it may be football related. It may not be. But it's happening in Qatar. So, yeah. Right. What are we looking well, at? Well, they, they, they signed... Uh, an agreement, and it's like good news for Cote d'Ivoire because after the United States of America in 2018, they actually turned off the Kingdom of Qatar is actually expressing their willingness to open direct flights to Abidjan. Okay. Now, this is going to be happening through the Qatar Airways, and it was, this information was given by the ambassador of Qatar, Mr. Jabe Al-Mari, after a hearing with the Ivorian Minister of Transport, Mr. Amadou Kone. Okay. Well, for, for Mr. Jaber Al-Mari, this will of the Qatari kingdom reflects all the confidence that his country places in Côte d'Ivoire and its leaders. Côte d'Ivoire, under the leadership of President Alassane Ouattara, is committed to development and progress. And Qatar is very happy to support in this dynamic. Mm. Well, he indicated that Qatar Airways intends to operate three flights per week between Doha and Abidjan from 16 June 2021. Right. Okay. And we had the minister, Amadou Kone, who actually warmly welcomed the news. So I think it's it's good. Absolutely. <laughs> it is. If there's a direct flight from Cote d'Ivoire to Qatar, I mean, yeah, should the World Cup take place, you don't need People to People can fly there. You just go straight. Easily. Yeah? It shouldn't yeah. just be about World Cup. We need to look at the development it's going to bring to the country itself. Yeah, oh, of course, obviously. Okay. Well, that's all we have for headlines across Africa.